What can you tell me about the characteristics of the images formed by a concave lens? Good. Um, virtual, upright, and trunk. How do you know? Um, okay, so when it's a concave lens, it's just diverging. Yeah, draw a picture of the concave lens. Good. So a concave lens, remember concave means that when you're looking into it, it's like you're looking into a cave. And we've simply memorized that this is diverging. We just have to memorize that this is a diverging shape. Somehow it feels diverging to me, but anyway, we just have memorized that that's diverging. Okay. And then, how did that help us? Um, so since it's diverging, we use a table. Um, yeah. Now, is this the only possible image, or are there other possible images too? Yeah, because for the diverging device, it doesn't matter where you put the object. It always gives you an upright, virtual, and shrunk image. Um, if it was converging, then there would be three different types of images, but. Uh, a diverging lens only gives us this. Okay, now um, I don't know if you would actually get full credit if you said the reason is because I looked at my table, right. so maybe we should get some other explanations here. So um, let's try to also prove this using ray tracing. So let's go ahead and draw a ray tracing diagram. So good. You probably would have been better off with the other one. Yeah. Oh, you um, should have left yourself more space over here. It's always good to leave yourself plenty of space on both the left and the right, because ahead of time we might not know what things are going to look like. Right, so we draw one ray parallel to the principal axis, and then it or its trace back goes to the focal point. Ah. Now, what was our prediction for this image? Oh, um, that it was diverging. It's diverging. Real or virtual? It's uh, virtual. Yeah, now how do we draw virtual images? Um, for the virtual images, uh, is the image formed by the outgoing rays or by the trace back? Yeah, this should tell, uh, forewarn us we're going to need the trace back over here. Or putting it another way, which way is this light going to bend? Is it going to bend up or down? Because it's the whole point is that it's diverging, right? They have to be bending up, otherwise the light wouldn't really be diverging. So there's two ways to see, so I guess you originally drew it like this, right? And there's two ways to see that's wrong. First of all, that wouldn't be diverging. All right, and secondly, because of our table, we knew ahead of time that we were going to be focusing on trace backs, um, not on the outgoing light rays themselves. So. Virtual images get formed by tracebacks. Virtual images get formed by tracebacks. So if the table already tells us that we're making a virtual image, we're forewarned that we'll need the traceback. You know, I made that same mistake. I was telling, telling you, I was worried too about where you were putting that focal point over here. But what really matters is, well, yeah, so you show me what to do now. Um, okay, fair enough.
So we've just decided that we're gonna have to use the focal point on the left-hand side of the lens. Of course, a lens has two focal points because it's, the light can come from either direction. Um, so you have to decide which focal point to use. We decide we're gonna use this one. Now, before you can decide what angle the alkaline light is going at, first you have to draw the trace back. And the trace back goes through the focal point over here. And now we just draw this alkaline light along the same line as that trace back uh, uh, over here. Okay, so that's our first ray. I think you might have gotten confused a little bit about that ray. So yeah, where does that ray come into? Doesn't it just go straight to the center of the lens? Yeah, not the focal point. That actually is a mistake I've seen a bunch of other students make too. Um, I think we talked about this a little bit before. Only one ray goes through the focal point. It's easy to get confused and think everything's going through the focal point, but actually only one ray goes through the focal point. Only the ray that comes in parallel to the axis goes through the focal point. So we should not draw the other ray through any focal points. The other ray, remember, is what we call the M ray for middle. It just goes straight through the middle of the lens. And it doesn't get bent at all. So if I was a good drawer, this would just be a straight line. That wouldn't get bent at all um, over here. OK, so that's a good, uh, a good point to make in your notes. The only time that you put the ray through the focal point is when, uh, if the incoming light is parallel to the axis, the outgoing light goes through the focal point. But no other outgoing light or trace back. And no other outgoing light should go through the focal point. So our two rays, uh, and one way we might have gotten confused by that is because we talked about that other F ray for a second. Uh, but these are the rays we usually draw, the P and the M rays. The P ray comes in parallel to the axis and goes out through the focal point, or it's trace back, goes through the focal point. And the M ray just goes straight through the middle. Okay. Good. Now we know that the image is located where the outgoing light rays or their trace backs intercept. Well, the outgoing light rays will never intercept because this is diverging. So we have to go to their trace backs. And just like you said, and it's always good to draw our little arrow here for the image. So that's our image. OK. No. Um. Clearly upright, good. And it's also shrunk. Clearly shrunk, good. The reason that it's virtual is because the image is um, not on the same side as the outgoing rays. Yeah, that's right. That would be a good way to describe that in words. How do we call this virtual? Remember that a virtual image is on the opposite side to the outgoing light. Well, the outgoing light here is on the right, but the image was on the left. That was the whole point of having to use the trace back to put in the image. So you can see you always have to use a trace back for a virtual image because um, the trace back is on the opposite side to the outgoing light. OK, so then that gives us uh, this as our virtual uh, image. OK, so uh, that's good to do. So do you think when they give me like a question like that, concave lens, the ray tracing is good enough evidence to show all that, right? Actually, um, you'd have to ask your TA okay. as to what standards they're holding you to there. Hopefully, uh, pretty soon you'll get uh, a sample exam with an answer key, yeah. and then you can see what they're putting in there. But that depends on the standards of the instructor. But I, I don't know, maybe not. Maybe we should also see how to do this by algebra. So let's go through the algebra for this. This would be good practice uh, anyway. Um, so. And your instructor uses S for object distance and S prime for image distance, right? And F for the focal point. OK, now this might not be so easy. Uh, but remember, what were we dealing with? We were dealing with a uh, diverging, it was a diverging lens, right? And the question is, what can we say about the image? Well, what can we put in mathematically here to our equation? Um. Oh, yeah, we just want to, now we want to um, show that we're going to get something virtual upright and shrunk just from the algebra. So let's see here. It's a diverging lens. What does that, which of the variables does that tell you about? Diverging lens will tell you about the the, 
what does it tell you about directly? What's the most direct information you get when you know that you have a diverging lens? The upright the now that's something we're trying to prove negative. in this case. It tells you the sign of whom? The focal length. The sign of the focal distance. That's right. Um, Diverging lenses have what types of focal lengths? Positive or negative? Yeah. 